Sunday. I um, want to give you just a moment now. Uh, we have an offering app that we use called Tidely. No one's here in the service, um, but we want you to take a moment now, share, say hello to the people around you. If it's a random text on uh, Sunday morning and people are sleeping because of the snow, still say, hey, good morning, it's Sunday, but just take a moment to do that. We'll give you a second uh, right now. This is also a great time to use the Church Tidely app to send any prayer requests you may have as well. And as we do that, we'll give you just a couple seconds, and then we'll go into the sermon. So hello, uh, and start, you can start texting and saying hello. We'll give you a couple seconds. I don't have my phone on me, so if you're texting my phone right now, I'm not getting any of those messages. So today, uh, we're taking a break from our normal sermon series. Our normal sermon series, we're going through a different book of the Bible each week, starting with Genesis, going all to Revelation. Uh, So we were supposed to be on the book of Luke today, the Gospel of Luke, but we'll pick that up next week. Today is just a small uh, snow devotional that we're looking at, just a small message to think about. And the question uh, I want us to be considering is, it's a snow day. And for many people, when you think it's a snow day, you think, great, I get to take the whole day off. But what happens when that snow day is on a Sunday? Do we remember what it is we're supposed to do on Sundays? Today's message is about remembering, setting reminders for what God wants us to do on Sundays. We call Sunday our Sabbath day. The passage we're looking at today comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. It's very simple. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's two thoughts. What he wants us to do is to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now, what I find interesting that is this might be one of the best commandments uh, of the Ten Commandments. This might be one of the greatest ones. It's the one that tells you to take time off. But what I find interesting is the one that should be the, the commandment we love the most is usually the one that many of us fail at the most. Isn't that ironic? Some of the more difficult ones we seem to, to really dive into, but this super easy one, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, seems to be one that we fail at uh, all the time. And so I want to look about just a second when it happens to be on a snow day like today, I think is a perfect example, perfect time to talk about it. So just pray with me very quickly. Lord God, we thank you for your word. Uh, Holy Spirit, we ask that every child uh, would draw near to you, that you would work in their hearts. And we pray that everyone uh, through this word, uh, Holy Spirit, you would help us to die, descend, and become more alive to you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for sending us your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. So the three things we're going to look at, I'm going to get three things very quickly, all have to do with remembering the Sabbath, that our goal is to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. So how are we going to do that? Well, three points really quickly. The first we want to do is we remember how to fail. What does that mean? Well, when we want to remember it, what we sometimes do is we fail at that a lot. So the first thing I want to talk about is how we fail at remembering to keep the Sabbath. Uh, an example would be, you ever heard the expression, missing the forest through the trees? It's when you're hiking and you're just consumed with all the trees and you forgot to forget to stop and take into how glorious the forest is. Or for some of you this morning, uh, you are not looking at the majesty of the snow. What you're actually thinking about is how much you're going to have to shovel in just a little bit. You're missing the snow because of the driveway. Uh, that's very similar to how we fail at remembering to keep this commandment. We, we don't have the big picture in mind. Uh, people struggle with this. And again, the idea is that the Sabbath uh, was meant for something. And one of the ways we fail, I'm going to bring up three ways we fail just right now, but the way we fail is the way that people have always been failing with the Sabbath. And you have a couple of examples where Jesus was doing things on the Sabbath, like healing people and feeding people who are hungry. And you had those who were uh, supposedly the religious, uh, understanded, learned men telling him, you're doing it all wrong. In Luke chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 2, and chapter 6, verse 7, we have a place where Jesus is doing things on the Sabbath, specifically to let them know they're misunderstanding what the Sabbath is for. And so you had people trying to rebuke Jesus on the Sabbath while he's doing wonderful, great things. And so what's the point that Jesus is trying to teach them there? Well, in many places, what he's saying is, listen, if you want to fail at keeping the Sabbath, then there's a couple of things you can do really easily. The first one is by work. If your idea of 
keeping the Sabbath feels like work, feels like making a list and checking it twice, then you are missing the point of the Sabbath. For some of you, you miss, we fail the Sabbath by neglecting to keep it. You don't think you need it. You ignore your need for it. So some of us miss the Sabbath because we spend so much time trying to work and make it perfect, we miss it. How many of us have done that at special family gatherings? We were so focused at making the event perfect, we just missed the joy of being with everyone. Well, many of us, we spend so much time work trying to make the Sabbath perfect, you miss the point of the Sabbath. For other of us, we neglect the Sabbath altogether. We don't think we really need it. And finally, another way we fail at keeping the Sabbath is that we doubt we need it. So some, make sure you understand the difference. So some, they work so hard at keeping it, they miss the point of it. Some people don't, uh, don't focus on it, so they neglect it. So too much emphasis, too little emphasis. And then there's some who just doubt that we even need to take a rest on Sabbath. So those are some simple ways that we fail. So the first thing I want us to do is remember how to fail. So if Sabbath for you is work, neglect, or doubt, then you are failing to keep the Sabbath. And remember, the commandment was to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. So if you are failing, if you are working, neglecting, or doubting, then you are definitely not keeping it holy, because to keep it holy means to keep it special. So that was point one. Point two, so remember how to fail. The second one is now, if we know how to fail, let's now remember how to succeed in keeping the Sabbath. Now, I've shared with you this before. We've all been there. It just happened to me again just the other day. I was sent on a trip to the grocery store to buy milk, and I bought everything except milk. I went there, found some fun stuff along the way, came home, and forgot the milk. For many of us, that's what we do. We get there, and we forget to keep the focus on the goal. So how do we succeed at remembering the Sabbath in order to keep it holy? Well, we succeed by remembering the day is about Christ. If remember that the day is about Christ, that sets our tone for what we expect to happen on that day. So even though it's snowing right now, it can still be about Christ. In Luke chapter 6, verse 5, right in the middle of those passages, Jesus reminds everybody that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath wasn't meant to beat men down. The Sabbath was created to lift men up, and Jesus is the Lord of man, so therefore he's the Lord of the Sabbath. So how do we succeed? Well, we succeed in remembering why we need the Sabbath. The Sabbath is for those who know the Lord, and if you know the Lord, that means, by definition, you have faith in him. You have faith that he has died for your sins on the cross. He has taken the punishment that we deserve. Scripture is very clear. It describes when you come to faith as a weight being lifted off your shoulders. He describes it as chains being broken off your wrists, that you are no longer slaves. The the feeling of freedom, of rejoicing. That should be our focus on the Sabbath. Now, a worship service is supposed to be the center, the crown point of a Sunday Sabbath the worship, the gathering of the saints to worship. That should be the centerpiece. But guess what? The worship service is not the only part of keeping the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy. So worship service is the center part, but it's not the only part. So gathering together in worship should be the the primer, the, the big part of your Sunday worship, but everything else on the day also points to what happened that we worshiped at the worship service. So are the worship services the high mark of your Sabbath, but the rest of the day, what are you doing to remember what it was we were worshiping? What we were worshiping is the risen Savior. The fact that your sins have been lifted off you, those chains have been broken. That's what it is we are worshiping. Psalm uh, Psalm 107 talks about what it feels like to be under sin. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners and affliction and irons. This is what we were apart from Christ. And the same Psalm 107 talks about what it's like when he comes. And it says, after it says, when we cried on him, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. 
This is what he did. He has lifted us up. He has broken the bonds that are holding us down. So how do we remember to succeed? How do we succeed? By rejoicing. How do we fail? (laughs) By neglect, work, and doubt. How do we succeed in keeping the Sabbath? By rejoicing. What does rejoicing look like? Rejoicing is a soul rest that we find in remembering that Jesus Christ has died for our sins. So what are you doing this day that's helping you rejoice and remember that Jesus Christ has died for your sins? As you rejoice in that, you are actually bringing rest to your weary souls, which is going to bring us to our final point. We rejoice in what Christ has done, and now we're going to look at our final point. So point three, we talk about how we need to remember how to fail so we avoid that, learn from people's mistakes. We want to remember how to succeed, and now the final question was is remember why we need it. Why do we need to keep the Sabbath even on a snow day like this? How can we keep it? This is why we want to do it. Uh, Remember, think about your cars. Uh, As you're driving your car throughout the week, uh, or I mean, we are living in a COVID world, maybe not as much as you used to, but at some point, your car is going to run low on energy, and you're going to need to fill it back up. Well, that's us. Your spirit is no different. Throughout the week, We are, by our own actions, we are all struggling with this. We do things that drain us. We do things that do pull us down. We shackle ourselves back to sin. We do things that weigh heavy on our souls. Just living in a world like we live in is going to happen. Weekly, daily, we're going to start to feel under that burden again. And so the reason why we need to, just like your car is going to need to be re-energized, your soul your faith gets re-energized by its rest in Christ. Sabbath rest was meant to re-energize your soul. And we need to do this because your soul is being depleted. We live in a fallen world. The people around us aren't perfect, and you need to make sure we understand that we are very unperfect ourselves. We are weighing ourselves down. And our souls need to be revived, need to be lifted up. We are no different. This is why we need a Sabbath rest. This is why God instituted it. He did it himself, took a rest after creating and said, you need to do this. It is great for you to do this. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30 says it so well. This is why we need it. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. That's all of us. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So whatever it is you're doing on the Sabbath, I hope you see that you need to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. And by keeping it holy, you're going to find rest for your weary souls. And our souls are weary all the time. We constantly need the rest that only comes from Christ. It's full of grace, mercy, holiness, redemption, restoration. We need to rest in him. So you can do it on a snow day. By joining to worship with us online this morning, you're able to do that as well, making worship a part of it. But then the rest of the day, are you rejoicing in who Christ is? Are you remembering to keep it holy as well as remembering it? My final question is this, do you have Sabbath rest? a true rest for your soul. That rest is only found in the person of Jesus Christ. So we looked at ways we can fail to keep the Sabbath, ways we can succeed at keeping the Sabbath, and the reason why we need to keep the Sabbath. So even on a snow day like today, my encouragement is that you should be able to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. It is sometimes the easiest commandment, but the hardest commandment. We all struggle with this, but I hope you are encouraged to understand why it is such a great commandment for us to follow. And I hope you'll be able to do it today before you start shoveling. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for you being Lord of the Sabbath. Lord, help us to see our souls are weighed down. For some of us, Lord, uh, it's weighed down by sin and we don't know you. 
And Lord, we need to call upon you as our Savior to feel the redemption and that weight truly lifted off. But for others of us, others of us who do know you, Lord Jesus, help us to see we need rest in you. We need Sabbath rest that only comes from you. Help us to rejoice in what you have done on the cross for us. Help our souls to find rest on the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son to us. And it's his name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.